before going into the complicated natural language processing architectures such as RNN. In this video, let's have a quick review of what all has happened in the world of NLP in last 10 years. So here are the things we are going to cover as part of this video. First of all, we are going to see history of NLP and I'm going to focus on last 10 years because most of the development has happened in last 10 years, okay? Then we are going to understand the growth of NLP with a example. So I will take a huge case and explain you how NLP will solve that huge case in 2013, 2014, 15, 16, like that, okay? Then we will see after deep learning, why deep learning has become so popular in the world of NLP and what is the reason behind that? We will see some Python demo, which will be very interesting. We will solve the same problem that I will discuss now. And then we are going to understand what will be the next steps in this series, okay? So you are going to take a lot from this video, guys, if you just show a little bit of patience and little bit of attention, okay? So let's start this video with little history of NLP. So I will just go 10 years back, okay? This is my 2013 and this is all the way 2023, okay? 2013 and 2023. So as many of you know, I am working in the industry since 2011, okay? So I was initially for one, one to two years, I was into big data, Hadoop data science, uh, I'm sorry, data engineering, those kind of things. And later I moved to data science. So I have seen all these phases from 2013 to 23, what all has happened in the world of NLP, okay? So I will write here few important things that you must fit in your mind, then you will be able to correlate things, okay? So in 2013, the time was, so I will write here what the time was, okay? The time was of, I will write here, some kind of n-grams, okay? n-grams, all these are different, different techniques in the world of NLP, okay? n-grams, some kind of count-based models, okay? Count-based models and some kind of word embedding also started coming in this era, 2013 and 2014, okay? Then I will explain you why these models were not sufficient. And then if you move around 2014, right? If you move around 2014, then two very, very big things happened in the world of NLP. One is known as recurrent neural network, RNN, and other is known as LSTM the other version of you can say RNN or an advanced RNN. These two things brought a very big breakthrough in the world of NLP. Why? I will explain you. Slowly we will go, okay? Then I will explain you. What happened in 2015 is something came, a paper came, the name of that paper was all you needed need is attention, okay? And there was introduced something known as attention mechanism. This me attention mechanism changed the entire landscape of natural language processing, okay? So remember these words, guys, which I'm writing here. Attention mechanism, the paper came in 2015, if I'm not wrong, and this changed the entire world of a natural language processing. After that, everything took all together a new route, a new, you know, pathway. After 2015, if we move little further, right, in 2017, two important things happened in the world of NLP, okay? One is known as transformers, okay? Transformers is one kind of architecture based on which many new things are developed. And other important thing that happened in 2018, I will just write here 2018. And this is known as something similar to transformer, but not exactly transformer, but... Okay, another kind of model. And as you move to 2020 and 2023, all of you know this is the era of GPT-based models and large language models is the most new thing that we are seeing in 2023. So guys, we started from some count-based models, which I will explain you now, and we reached to LLM, large language models, okay? So I'm going to take one simple use case and try to explain you 
how things have evolved in the world of NLP. If you understand this right, then it will be very easy for you to digest uh, the, the advanced concepts and how things have moved, okay? Now, few things here, whenever I say NLP, right? NLP stands for natural language processing. In natural language processing, there can be text data, there can be audio data, there can be video data, there can be image data, okay? Audio, video, image. These kind of data can be there. And, you know, different kinds of use cases can be there. So needless to mention, some of the use cases which you can see of NLP in day-to-day -day practices. For example, Gmail autocomplete feature. I'm sure all of you would be using this. So when you start writing any email in Gmail, it will automatically autocomplete, right? That is one feature. Then you will see some kind of audio to text or text to audio kind of AWS gives you those kind of devices. In video, you can see many applications of video analytics, right? So many of these things fall under the category of NLP. We will focus more on text-based NLP. The reason for that is in market, most of the use cases that we use and most probably you will be working will be text-based. Fine. Having said that, let's take a simple text-based huge case and try to understand how this huge case would have been solved using different techniques and how this will be solved using RNN. Okay. So I will just explain you how this would have been solved using various techniques before. Suppose, suppose I try two sentences here. Okay. My first sentence is I am, I am playing, I am playing cricket. This is my first sentence. My second sentence is he is playing. He is playing football. Okay. I take these two sentences. Now suppose these two sentences is my entire training data. Suppose this is my entire training data. And what I want to do is I have a level against this. Okay, so I have a target variable. This is a supervised problem. So if this sentence is a sentence related to cricket, then class should be one. Otherwise, class should be zero. So this is my problem statement. Okay, this is my problem statement. So tomorrow, if I write a new sentence here, for example, I write here, cricket is good. Just an example I'm giving. Then my model should be able to predict this falls in the category of one or zero. So this is a classification problem, simple. To make it simple, you can think of sentiment classification or any other model, which tells whether this is a positive sentiment or negative sentiment. I'm taking these two because people are very easily able to relate with games, okay? So these are two sentences in front of you and you have to use to train your model. Now let's understand how people used to do this back in 2013 and 14, okay? Before that, let's understand few basic stuff about NLP or text data. So I will be using some term known as document. Document and another term I will use known as corpus. So don't confuse between these two words, guys, document and corpus. In this scenario, each of these sentences, for example, sentence one and sentence two, both these sentences are one one document. Okay, in this particular use case, suppose tomorrow you are working on a use case where there are 100 PDF files, for example, PDF one. Okay, so on and so forth. Let's say you have 100 PDF files. So all these PDF files is one one document for you. This is first document PDF two is second document and this is your hundredth document. So every time somebody tells a document, you should understand that this person is talking about one particular record or one particular um, observation. Okay. So understand document like that. And somebody talks about corpus. Corpus is a combination of all your documents. So in my case, what will be corpus? Corpus is all these documents together. So if you, if you combine these two sentences together, what you get is your corpus. Corpus means everything that is there in your um, huge case. And here, if you combine all these hundred documents, what you get is your corpus. So please be clear on what is a document and what is a corpus. And keep in mind these two sentences. 
what is the use case you have to classify a new sentence based on that analysis okay so as all of you know i was telling you nlp will take text data input data audio data video data image data and many kind of data but one thing we must understand all the machine learning models or deep learning models will expect what numbers it will not expect any kind of image or text or video okay it will work on numbers okay so your job first job is to somehow convert this training information into numbers how would you do that the most basic way of doing that is just see how many words are there in your corpus now note here i am saying corpus so how many words are there if i take those two sentences and i start writing here i is one word okay m is another word the all the words that is there in your corpus i am writing okay playing is another word cricket is another word okay he is another word ignore the okay i will write like this imagine everything is lower case only he is and then i will write football okay football so if this is the word this is the entire corpus in front of you right then what i'm going to do is i'm going to write as index here my document 1 and my document 2 okay come here and see the word i is present in your first document or not present so i will make this one the word m let me take it in a different color so that it's easily you can understand this is present so i will make this one m is present i will make sorry this will also be one because m is present okay playing is present i will make this one cricket is present i will make this one he is not present zero is is not present zero football is not present zero okay and i will come here and he is playing football is my second word so playing will be one football will be one he will be one and is will be one this will be zero this will be zero and this will be zero now why i am explaining you in this detail is try to understand how people try to convert sentences to numbers back then 10 years back and use that in their classification model now this becomes your individual feature so for example this is your feature 1 this is your feature 2 and so on and so forth and here becomes your target variable so first is your cricket so this will become 1 second is your football so this will become 0 so this is your target variable now this becomes your complete classification problem you can train your data on this most basic approach most fundamental approach that was used like way back okay just to give you a conceptual understanding of what used to happen back then and this method is called as most of you know one hot encoding okay one hot encoding now if you note it down i just made here small case but in the sentence he was in h is in capital letter right so if you see in the sentence i i am writing here i should have written here let me write here in small case only it should be small case only understand this as small case okay everything understand that as a small case so if you notice here few things are capital here and few things are small letters here but in my in my data preparation when when i am preparing the data right i am making everything as small case okay and this is one kind of text cleaning this is one kind of cleaning of text data so if you want to understand more about what are different text cleaning techniques and how it is done then i want to take your attention to unfold data science nlp playlist on youtube so you have to go and search for unfold data science nlp you will find a video playlist of 12 videos just watch the video called nlp data cleaning technique okay you will know what are different data cleaning techniques used in the world of nlp okay so now we have a one hot encoded document in front of us but there are some problems with this approach what is first problem first problem is this document will be unnecessary very very large because understand here here we have limited number of words what if there are large number of words this document will be very very large and most of the entries will be zero so that is a problem of something known as sparse matrix okay 
sparse matrix so it will be very very large matrix and lot of zeros hence it will take lot of processing time and second problem with this is these words right these words are treated individually okay so words are treated individually individually means there is no uh, capturing of relation between the words i will give you examples going forward but you have to understand all these words are simply put in a bag so there is a concept of bag of words so this is very simple like you have broken all the words in tokens so what are the tokens i is one token m is another token playing is another token so what you have done is you have created a bag like this and you have put all your words like t1 t2 t3 like tokens there is no order maintained there is no meaning maintained right so all these words are treated separate separate that is one problem so what was the next thing that people did people what they did is they came to the world of something known as world of n grams so i will write two here and i will say the world of the world of n grams i am explaining you all these techniques guys so that you will be very confident when you speak to someone okay so remember those two words i am playing cricket he is playing football okay so i will write here again so that we can take reference i am playing cricket okay and he is playing football so these two words are there in front of us now what happened in the world of n grams is the meaning of n gram is we will create token of multiple words together not a single single word okay so n gram can be 1 gram also and n gram can be 2 gram also and n gram can be many grams okay it can be 4 gram 5 gram 6 gram and in the end it can be n gram okay so what is the meaning of this if i have to take 1 gram tokens from this right then my tokens will be i m playing all those things that was there in the previous example so 1 gram is nothing different than one hot encoding okay so what will be your 1 gram uh, tokens cricket then he then is and then football these are your 1 gram tokens okay very similar to your one hot encoding in 2 gram tokens you will take two words together for example i am this is your one token am playing this is your another token okay and then playing cricket this is your third token 2 gram token understand guys what people were trying to do is they were trying to understand which two words or three words come together suppose i write here 3 gram token right so in 3 gram token how it will be created i am playing this is one token okay and then another token will be am playing cricket am playing cricket so understand this will not be taken from one document only from the entire corpus this will be taken okay this is 3 gram token and similarly you can create a n gram tokens from this as many as words you want to take what is the advantage the advantage is suppose playing cricket is coming here so playing football will also come so it will at least capture some meaning so how do you create your your data training data so for example this is your document 1 this is your document 2 so you will write your n gram tokens here so n gram tokens this will be your one set of features this will be your one set of features then you sorry i'm sorry one gram tokens you can say and then here you can say two gram tokens two gram tokens will be your other set of features and then three gram tokens and so on and so forth how many ever you want to take so if i want to take one gram token is i present yes is m present yes two gram token i m is present yes m playing is present yes playing cricket is present yes playing football is present no similarly for this and similarly for document 2 now what is happening here you are trying to capture some context so for document 2 also maybe 1 1 some 0 some 1 some 0 some 1 okay and then here in the end your target variable will be there one or zero so now the prediction can happen on this so this becomes your training data you have lot of features now and then your you know you can train your model based on this so how this model is different from basic one hot encoding 
at least some meaning of the word and some more context we are trying to understand. This is the world of n-grams, okay? Now let's move to the third. What is the problem with n-grams again? Sparse metric problem. And you know, it is not very efficient. How many tokens you will create? How many grams you will create, right? So one gram itself will be very too many tokens. Two grams will be too many tokens. Three grams will be too many tokens, right? Many tokens will be there. So how many you can keep creating, right? So this is again a sparse metric problem, computation problem. As the third technique, people move to something known as TF IDF, okay? TF stands for term frequency and IDF stands for inverse document frequency. What is the purpose of this particular mechanism is, suppose there are two words in front of you, the uh, two sentences that I just mentioned. For example, just to understand simply, I will write it here again. I am playing cricket, okay? And then he is playing football. If you notice here in these two sentences, guys, playing word is common in both these sentences, okay? But what differentiates these two sentences? The presence of cricket and football. So in TF-IDF, the prime agenda is to not look sentences individually, okay? So in all these techniques till now, you might be noticing sentences or documents are looked individually and these numbers are computed. In TF-IDF, sentences and corpus is looked together and a differentiator is tried to create here. So how the differentiator will be created is words which are common across all the documents, these will be given low weightage, okay? And words which is present in only one document, these will be given how it is, a high weightage for that particular document. There is a complete mathematics behind it. For example, if I write here cricket, okay? And if I write here football, okay? And if I write here playing, and I want to compute TF-IDF score of document one and document two, then in document one, the TF-IDF score for cricket will be high. In document two, the TF-IDF score for football will be high. The playing score in both these documents will be very, very low or zero. The reason for that is playing is a common word in both these documents. And the differentiator is cricket and football, so their numbers will be high. There is a complete mathematics behind it. If you want to go in more detail, guys, again, I will refer you to the same playlist that I was mentioning. And here you can go and see feature extraction techniques from bag of words to TF-IDF, count vectorizer and TF-IDF. And I have done one huge case also using TF-IDF. So it will be very easy for you to understand from here all the mathematics I have explained there, okay? So now what is happening? Now entire corpus people and people started looking together and tried to understand the meaning of words and compute TF-IDF. TF-IDF can be computed for n gram tokens also, not individual tokens. Suppose I want to compute TF-IDF for this or this or this, I can very well do that. That is doable, okay? So up to TF-IDF, at least some, some meaning started coming in the world of NLP. Some, some things we are able to capture, right? Now, TF-IDF was number three. I was just checking which number I'm in. And then I will go to number four. Now, what is number four? As it moves forward, it becomes a little more interesting. Let me see my notes here once, which I have noted at number four. At number four, we will learn something about the world of word embedding the world of word embedding. Now, one thing to notice here, guys, till now we are processing document by document. If you notice here, all these techniques will go and look for word occurrence in a document and create a matrix based on that. What if I want to process my document word by word? What if I want to process my machine learning engine word by word? For example, here I have a sentence, I am playing cricket, okay? So I do not want to process this sentence as a whole. Rather, I want to learn from word by word. So I will treat I first, then I will treat M, then I will treat playing, then I will treat cricket. So how would you do that? How would you, you know, treat word? So word needs to be converted to numbers and those are called word vectors, okay? Remember this terminology, guys, word, vectors. Word vectors means what if I create a vector from this word? 
how will you create a vector from this word one famous technique is known as again one hot encoding one hot encoding okay one hot encoding what it will do is it will simply assign a number to all the words in your corpus for example how many words are there in my corpus i am playing playing cricket let's take first sentence only just to make you understand i'm not taking the second sentence now suppose i is your word number one aim is your word number two playing is your word number three cricket is your word number four so if you do a one hot encoding right then this is how your same sentence will look like one zero 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 this is your first word Try to understand this guy. This is the base for everything in RN and LSTM and large language models. Okay. One zero 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 is your first word. Then zero one zero zero is your second word. Okay. Because M is number two. M is number two, right? So second word becomes one. Third word becomes zero zero one zero. Third word. Fourth word zero 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 one. So try to understand don't confuse this entire thing is your first sentence this entire thing is your first sentence okay and this is your word one this is your word two this is your word three and this is your word four and this is called this one zero zero this thing is word vector this is word vector this is word vector and this is word vector so i told you one technique of one hot encoding to encode your numbers word into word vectors. And from this only, the advanced techniques of word embedding came into picture, okay? I'm going to show you in Python how the advanced word embeddings are working. But one thing I want to tell you here, when word embeddings came into, into the picture, then artificial neural networks started gaining lot of attention in the industry artificial neural networks why because it needs a lot of processing power now understand guys this looks much simpler if i talk from processing point of view right from machine point of view processing point of view if i go document by document it looks a little simpler right but if i go word by word right then my input itself is becoming very very huge so processing will become huge and it will need need more memory and more complex network and that is when the artificial neural networks became popular. Then word embeddings and all these things started taking picture. It started taking, you know, front seat in the world of NLP. So what is the problem of, with word embedding again? This is computationally expensive. As I told you, the input will go all together in different way now using tensors. So if you don't know the concept of tensors, guys, please read about it. It's a very, very simple topic to understand. You can simply, you know, if you are a Python guy, you can simply think it like n dimensional array. Okay, n d array in Python. So if there is one value, one single value, then this is like one, one scalar value. If I write like one, two, three, four, this is one kind of vector value. And I can write a 2D vector, I can write a 3D vector, I can write a n-dimensional vector, right? So in the world of machine learning, tensors are nothing but you can think of n-dimensional array. And where that is used is, now suppose this, this sentence you have to give input to your training, right? This sentence. So this sentence itself has become a n-dimensional array. If you see this, right? So this has become a n-dimensional array. So this will be called as a tensor, okay? So it will go in input as a tensor. So nothing to confuse there. Tensor means input is going in n dimensional array. You have to understand. And since artificial neural network came, so these computations became possible. Now, if I go one level from here, then there are different types of word embedding. I, I explained you a simple word embedding technique that is one hot, but there are different types of word embedding techniques. For example, what to wake is a word embedding technique, okay? Globe is another word, word embedding technique. So what these will do is, this will give a more meaningful embedding to your words. For example, if I take word to wake as an example, right? And if I take cricket as a word, so 
in normal word one hot encoding it will just be one zero one zero one zero right but this is a pre-trained model what to make is a pre-trained model and glow is also a pre-trained model when you take a pre-trained model and when you embed your machine learning model your data right so it will be featured on some of the other dimensions for example is game is outdoor okay is outdoor is multiplayer i'm writing here some features on these features your word will be given a score so cricket is a game so 0 0.9 score out of one is an outdoor game 0 0.8 score out of one is multiplayer game 0 0.9 score out of one so this becomes your vector i'm just writing here three it can be a 300 or 3000 vector dimension vector so i'm writing here not dimension objects you know presence of elements in the vector so 0 0.9 0 0.8 0 0.9 this is your vector cricket okay another word comes one more vector gets generated so if you compare from your normal one hot encoding right then that that looks little more meaningful okay so that is one kind of advanced you can say word embedding technique if you compare like you know some time back but I'm going to show you in Python, in Keras, right? In Keras, which is which is a deep learning framework, it gives you its own embedding layer. Okay, it gives you its own embedding layer in Keras. So what you can do is this is a famous deep learning framework. In Keras, you can simply say that this is my vector, this is my document, embed my document, and you can just get your embedding done. And there is one more embedding that I will show you in Python now that is known as integer based encoding that is very similar to what we saw in one hot encoding. Okay, integer based encoding. So try to understand guys how things are improving in the world of NLP. I'm going to Python now and show you how these things are working together. Just a quick revision. All these things we have understood how the NLP has improved right from count vectorizer counting the number of words here in place of one zero you can also write count of the word okay that is counting the number of words then problems with this then the world of n-grams then how, what happened in tfidf and then how the word embedding came into picture so converting word to vectors came into picture some sophisticated way of converting word to vectors came into picture and then let's go to python and see what are different embedding techniques that i want to show you so here guys i have taken these two lines as you can see import numpy as np my corpus so what is my corpus my corpus is simply combination of those two sentences that i am writing i am playing cricket he is playing football this is my two documents or two sentences that you can see here i will say enter from keras dot preprocessing i am importing tokenizer now some of you who is not aware of any concept of deep learning or neural network you have to go to unfold data science deep learning and right from intuition behind neural network you will find all the video till optimizers in neural network okay so everything that i will speak from here on if you have any confusions please go and see this playlist 15 videos all these are very very useful for you okay so going back to Keras is a famous deep learning framework i will say here from Keras, i'm importing preprocessing dot text and I'm saying I'm initializing a tokenizer object. Tokenizer object means it will tokenize my, my corpus. And then I'm calling a method called fit on text. And then if you see here, guys, whatever I'm highlighting, right? The, the fit on text has given one number to all the words in my corpus. So playing is my word number one. I is my word number two. M is my word number three. Cricket is my word number four. He is my word number five is six football seven so as i was telling you in a theory right if you see here he is h is capital here but in the token h is small how that becomes small because keras itself did some pre-processing on my text try to understand this keras itself did some pre-processing on my text and converted everything to lowercase and assigned a number at the moment my words are assigned one one number right and then if i run text to sequences right then you will see that my 
my original document are these two. Okay, so my first my first document is I am playing cricket. And my second document is he is playing football. Okay, so I is which number word I is second number word so two. Okay, you can see here these two words are represented in terms of integers now these two sentences. So two three one four means I am playing cricket. Two is I M is three playing is one cricket is four. So two three one four is my first sentence. Okay, five six one seven same way is my second sentence. He is playing football. He is five is six playing one and football seven. So what I have done here is I have imported a Python package from Keras and I have converted my text to numbers using something known as integer embedding. This is called as a integer embedding. All your words will be given one one integer number and your sentence will be converted like this. Very similar to one hot encoding just that numbers are here. Integer numbers are here. OK. So if we move from here, the other technique, the other word embedding technique that I want to show you comes directly from Keras. Keras will embed it for you. So if I go here and uh, I am just creating a pad sequence, which which I am creating for for some purpose, I will come back to this later. But before that, guys, here, as you can see, import TensorFlow, I am importing embedding layer and then flatten and dense and simple add and I'm not using. Don't worry about all this. If you see most of these things I'm not using, whatever I'm highlighting, OK, just I'm using sequential model and I'm using embedding layer. So as you can see, just focus on line number six, seven and eight, whatever I'm highlighting here from Keras, I'm taking a sequential layer. And then I'm adding an embedding. Embedding means I want to embed my input. And then I'm saying eight. Why I'm saying eight? because there are seven unique words in my vocab. How many unique words are there in my vocab? Seven unique words in my vocab. So in Keras embedding, you have to give n plus one. So eight output dimension, I want three and input length is four. Input length is what is the length of my, my each sentence. So here in this box, what I'm doing is I'm just padding. So what is the concept of padding? I will tell you, suppose, suppose, there are two sentences. One is I am and other is I am Aman. OK, so when you send when you convert this sentence to integer encoding or any kind of encoding, right? Suppose this will have 15 and M is let's say 16 number word. So this is the integer encoding for this, right? And here suppose 15 and then 16 and then Aman is let's say 17. So this vector is of size three and this vector is of size. Sorry, this vector is of size two and this is of size three. I don't want that to happen because that will create problem in my machine learning. So I want both these vectors to be same size for making it same size. There is a concept of padding. So what padding will do is it will add zero just to make it a fixed number. For example, I say make it padding is equal to zero and add zero in pre pre means before this or post means after this. So then I will get two vectors. 15, 16, 0. This is my first sentence and 15, 16 and 17. This is my second sentence. OK, so this is padding. What padding does it makes your vectors equal size by adding zeros in front or in the back. So that is what I'm doing here from Keras utils import pad sequences. And I'm saying if some word is not in the same uh, word, if 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 some is not in the same you know length, then convert that to same length. But in this case, bo both my words are four 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 numbers only, so this is fine. This will not do anything. Now what I'm doing, I'm the same thing I'm giving here. Input length is equal to four. So what I'm asking to Keras is take these input, okay? Take these input and give me an output of three dimensions. So let's come back to our our here again. So now what we have is. We have words, OK, and in our words, we have how many how many vocab seven vocab seven is my vocab size vocab size means how many unique words are there in your vocab. 
So if you come here, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven unique words in my vocab. So when the vector will be created, one hot encoded vector will be created, then it will be created. How many entries will be there? For example, suppose for cricket word, I want to create a one hot encoded vector. So how many elements will be here? There will be seven elements, right? Seven elements. So first element will represent I, second M like that. Okay. So only cricket will be one, rest all will be zero. So what I'm saying is seven is my vocab size. So when my model will get created, the embedding model, it will look like this one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Okay. And then I am saying output dimension will be three. Output dimension will be three means one, two, and three will be my output. So what I want to do, I want to create a fully connected neural network here, fully connected neural network here, where I am saying to Keras embedding that, take my word, suppose my cricket word looks like this, one, zero, 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 seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So suppose my cricket word looks like this. Now do not confuse between these numbers and this encoded number. So this is word number two. For example, my is word number two. So this encoding will happen internally. Otherwise it cannot send it to the vector space, okay? So this encoding will happen internally. What you have here is one number for each word, okay? So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Suppose we are talking about two, word number two, right? So that word number two will become one, rest will become zero. This goes as input to your embedding layer or this model in this case. And what I'm saying to Keras is, give me a three dimension output. Three dimension output is encode my word in a three dimension space. So three dimension space means it will be a D1 and D2 and D3. So my word cricket, my word cricket will have some score on these three. So this score can be, let's say 0 0.6, minus 0 0.4 and 0 0.2. Similarly, my word football, my word football can have a score of 0 0.5 on this, 0 0.2 and 0 0.1, something like this. What I'm saying to Keras is take all my words one by one words which are encoded in integer format. Remember, this integer format words will be converted to one hot vectors before sending it to the model. So two number word, only this place will become one, rest all will become zero. That will be sent and the output, what you get is a three dimension output, okay? So if I run this model here and if I predict, for example, I'm compiling this model, and I'm predicting on my padded sequence. My padded sequence in same input data I'm predicting on, okay? If I'm predicting on my padded sequence, that is same input data, what you will notice here is, now my word number two, my word number two is represented by this. This is my word number two, okay? Please pay attention here, guys. My word number two, went to the model, learned the embedding, and we, when it came back after embedding, it is represented like this, okay? Similarly, the next word is represented like this. So all the words in my padded sequence, which was there on which model was trained only, okay, has been converted into a three-dimensional numbers. Now, your original sentence, your original sentence, these two sentences are these three dimensional numbers now. Now you can take these numbers, you can train your model and do whatever you want. Okay, before I train my model, I will explain you one more time what has been done here. This is your original sentence. From your original sentence, what you did, you created tokens. Tokens means individual words. In those individual words, you assigned a number. For example, playing is first word, I is second word, M is third word and so on and so forth. Once this happened, then you said, okay, create a sequence from my corpus. Now the first sentence has been converted to a series of numbers because you know, now system identifies that as a number. So I is number two, M is number three, playing is number one and cricket is number four, okay? Now what I want to do is I want to take advantage of Keras embedding layer. 
So when I want to send this to Keras embedding for one more layer of embedding, then if I send this my sequences, right, then it will get converted into a one hot vector. All these words will be converted into one hot vector and those will be predicted based on Keras embedding. So when the embedding results comes out for all the word, I will have three, three numbers that I'm trying to show you there for all the words, three, three numbers. Okay. For all the words, three, three numbers, one, two, three number for first word, one, two, three number for fourth word and so on and so forth. I can take this data and train a model. Let's do that. So till now, if you notice, I have not defined my target variable. I, I'm solving this as a classification problem. Okay. So here, what I'm trying to do, I am trying to from NumPy import, I'm importing an array and I'm calling sentence level is equal to array one zero. Array one zero means I'm trying to predict if a given sentence falls in the category of cricket. So one means cricket, zero means no cricket. Okay. So I'm giving one zero. I will call this as is my sentence models. Okay. Now, if you see here, I'm again taking sequential. I'm adding same way the embedding layer that, that I was doing above. And then I'm add, adding a flatten layer. And this is a very simple basic neural network. If you have confusions, you can watch, you know, components of neural network video. It will be very, very clear to you what I'm doing here. Very simple neural network and segmoid because this is a classification problem. So training this neural network. And then here, if you see, I am taking a new sentence. He is playing football. Okay. And this new sentence has been converted into a sequence using same tokenizer that we did above. So if you see here, the same tokenizer that we uh, used above my tokenizer, right? Using this tokenizer only, I have converted my sentence into sentence sequence. And then I have padded because I want to ensure it's a free uh, four, four thing, four character thing. And then I have predicted. And if you can see here, my prediction is zero. Zero means it is not cricket because my input line here is what is my input line here? My input line here is it is football. Okay. So what I did in this model up to here, I created my text into numbers. Then I added a label because I did not had in the beginning. And then I defined a neural network model with one, just one embedding layer, one flatten layer and target is dense because this is a sigmoid because this is a binary classification problem. I compiled my model and I just fit my model and I'm predicting with a new sentence. My new sentence is he's playing football on this new sentence. I'm predicting when I'm predicting, I'm getting my prediction as zero zero because this is not a cricket related word. Okay. And here all the pre-processing that I am doing, it is based on the pre-processing what I did in the training data. So what is this? This is a simple classification problem that I solved in front of you using simple, most basic neural network. Okay. Most basic neural network using that. I solved a simple classification problem. Now my question to you, first question to you, which I want you to write me in comment is, why total number of parameters and total number of trainable parameters is 24 here. That is the first thing that you have to write me in comment. Okay. Think on that and write me. If you understand the neural network architecture, you will be easily able to explain me why that is 24 only. Why not something else? Okay. You have to explain me in the comment. Then second thing that I want to capture here. I want to go back there and try to explain you that we have covered everything up to word embedding. Okay. So which means that we have covered everything up to whatever happened before the world of RNN. So why RNN came into picture? What is the use of RNN? We have all these techniques. Then why RNN has come into picture? So I will write here one word. Okay. One sentence and then we will think together. For example, I write here. I was, I was born in Germany. I was born in Germany and hence, and hence can speak 
blank. So what do you think will be here in the blank? Obviously, you and me are human, so we can simply think it will be German. Okay, because somebody is born in Germany, so he or she can speak German. How did you come to that conclusion? Because whatever was written before this, using this memory, right? You went backwards and you understood what was said before. What was said before is I was born in Germany. Okay. And this information, I was born in Germany, was useful in determining what will be the next word. Or in other way, you can say in useful in understanding the context of a given line or sentence. Okay. In none of these models, in none of these models that we have discussed till now, whatever kind of word embedding we have done, whatever kind of advancement we have done, till now we don't have capacity and capability of remembering what happened before. For example, in this sentence, there are four words, okay? In integer-based encoding or any encoding you do, right? All these words will go and all these words will you know, prediction will happen. So one n-dimensional array will get created, one n-dimensional array will get created, which we call tensors also. That will go as the input in any neural network and output will come and then the loss will be optimized. That is how it will work. But there is no way the previous information can be captured or stored or memorized. What is meant by previous information is, in this case, suppose the, the sentence is I am Aman. I goes as a word vector, M goes as another word vector, Aman goes as another word vector. But there is no way in a normal artificial neural network that I can remember when I, when I reach Aman, first of all, all these things will be processed together only. So there is no, no time to reach something, okay? But suppose when I reach Aman, I don't have any information about what was before Aman. And if you don't have this information, what was before Aman, then, you know, understanding what can happen after that or understand the complete context of that becomes very, very difficult. That is one problem with all these approaches that we have done till now. What is the other problem? So I'm writing another word here. For example, I say, I was, I was walking, I was walking on, on bank of river, okay? Or th this is one my favorite I will take, okay? So for example, I can say I work at Apple, okay? And here I say I eat Apple. Now based on the context, right? The meaning of word Apple is changing a lot. So another example of how the context, based on the context, the meaning of the sentence and word changes. And then there are some sentences where there is confusion. There is referential ambiguity. You don't understand what this sentence is. For example, chicken, chicken is ready to eat. Now, whether chicken is ready to eat something or chicken is cooked to eat, we don't know that. So understanding the sarcasm, understanding the, the context of a saying, sentence in a given, given scenario, right? All these things can be possible only when you remember the previous words in the network. So scientists and researchers had to find out a way to remember what happened before, remember what was said before, and keep that information in the network so that by looking at that information, you know, the better predictions can be made. And that is where the born, you know, the new type of neural networks was born. And that is known as recurrent neural network or RNN. Okay. So that is where the new type of neural network was born in 2014, especially for sequential data. So whatever data I kept, I discussed now came into the category of sequential data. For example, a sentence, right? I am Aman, okay? Living, living in dash, dash, dash. So 
if somebody knows where Aman lives, they can fill this sentence. So this is a kind of sequential data where next thing depends on previous thing and next thing has relation from the previous thing. Okay. And suppose you want to predict stock market data. So maybe maybe some stock price is, let's say, 1200, 1250, 1230, and then 1180, and then 1120, and then 1215. So what will be the next prediction? It will depend on the previous values. So this, this kind of data is called sequential data. So to solve the problem of sequential data and to memorize the information, there was this architecture born RNN and another variant of RNN is LSTM. So I'm going to cover in my next video the architecture of RNN and how RNN works and how it is used in the deep learning and in sequence models. And then we will go on to the advanced topics, okay? So what you have to do, guys, I showed you two playlists here. One is artificial neural network basics. If you don't know basics, it will not be easy for you to understand advanced topics, okay? So just go through this and understand the basics well. And NLP basics like data cleaning or word embedding or word vectors and these things I covered. But again, go here and see which videos you want to see and which videos make sense for you. Watch those videos, okay? Just to recap, what all we covered today is a brief history of NLP till RNN, okay? Different techniques from the beginning, word, from WordCon to TFIDF to n-gram bigrams, right? To word embeddings, to different types of word embedding. And then why word embedding is not that great and what is what are the problems with word embedding? What is padding? And I showed you a sentiment analysis use case of word embedding using very, very simple sentiment analysis use case using integer embedding, keras embedding. We solved that use case. So please let me know what are your questions and how, how did you like this video, guys? As always, your comments are my motivation. So please keep commenting and you know, press like if you like this video. See you all in the next video, guys. Wherever you are, stay safe and take care.